Delhi seems headed for president's rule with both the BJP and Kejriwal's Aam Aadmi Party reluctant to form the government. The Aam Aadmi Party said it is ready for a repoll since it doesn't have a clear mandate from the people. The party today met at Kejriwal's residence to discuss future action. It's also made clear it will not seek Congress support. In the polls to that 70 member assembly, BJP and allies ended up with 32 seats and up with 28. The Lieutenant Governor of Delhi will explore all options to form a government, the Home Minister Sushil Kumar Shinde has said. Sources said that the Lieutenant Governor will first call the BJP, which is the single largest party. The offer will then be put to the second largest party, the Aam Aadmi Party, which has backed 28 seats. Though both parties have now refused to stake claim, the Lieutenant Governor will try talking to the party leaders individually. After being decimated in the assembly polls, the Congress is desperately searching for answers. Efforts are on to place the entire blame on the present central leadership, and this will shield Rahul Gandhi. First, Sonia Gandhi indicated this while talking to the media after the results, and then senior party leader Digvijay Singh told headlines today that the Congress will soon announce a new prime ministerial candidate, and all indications are that it will be Rahul Gandhi. Long-term ally Sharad Pawar launched a strong attack on the Congress leadership following its drubbing on the polls. People don't like weak rulers, Pawar said in an obvious reference to the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. He also said that the ruler must not only frame effective measures but also have the capacity to implement them. Immediately after Sharad Pawar's attack on the UPA leadership, the Samajwadi Party welcomed him to join the Third Front. SP leader Naresh Agarwal said that this will provide an alternative to the Congress and the BJP. He also said that SP had been opposing the Congress so that the third front emerges. There's more trouble for the Congress this time from its own MPs. Six party MPs from Seema Andhra region have given notice for moving a no confidence motion against the Manmohan Singh government. They'll also seek the support of other MPs who are against the bifurcation of Andhra Pradesh. The plan of the MPs appears to be to embarrass the government over the issue. But there's some consolation for the Congress from Mizoram where the party has backed two-thirds majority in the 40-member assembly. Among the winners is Congress leader and Chief Minister Lal Thanhala who was elected to the assembly for a record ninth time. He contested from two places in central Mizoram and won both seats. Celebrations broke out among Congress workers in the state as the results came in. Anna Hazare is remaining firm on his demand for the Jan Lokpal bill. He'll go on hunger strike starting Tuesday and has threatened not to break his fast till the Ombudsman bill becomes a reality. Dr. Janeri, an anti-corruption crusader, wants the government to bring the Jan Lokpal bill in the ongoing winter session of parliament and Hazare's announcement comes after he wrote a letter to the Prime Minister expressing his displeasure over the government's failure to bring the bill. The Supreme Court has sought replies from the Centre and Nuclear Regulator AERB on a plea against commissioning of the Kudankulam nuclear power project in Tamil Nadu. This is on the ground that its directions on ensuring safety in and around the plant have not been complied with and the court has posted the matter for hearing in January. The Supreme Court has held that the plea against our chief Shubhrata Roy for allegedly interfering with the probe in the 2G scam. Notices were issued to Shubhrata Roy and two employees of Sahara. The court acted on the plea of an enforcement directorate's investigating officer that two journalists from the group had tried to blackmail him over the case. With the number of Indian students studying in Britain declining, the UK has affirmed that there is no cap and they are more than welcome to pursue education. UK Secretary of State for Business Vince Cable said that Britain receives thousands of Indian students but the numbers have been falling while that from China are going up. Cable was in Delhi for the ninth meeting of the India-UK Joint Economic and Trade Committee. India Inc. has strongly reacted to the results of the assembly elections in the four states. Asocham said that the election results in the assembly elections have thrown a clear message is the quality of governance which matters at the end of the day. Entrepreneur Kiran Mazumdar Shah tweeted, Congress has been shown the door for poor political leadership and unconvincing approach to corruption. The markets reacted positively to the big BJP win across the Hindi heartland. Sensex reached a record high to close at 21,326.42, up 329.89 points or 1.57%. As many as 99 stocks hit a 52 week high the nifty closed the day at 6363.90 up 104 points or 1.66% this is the index's record closing high in nearly 6 years and let's say the uptrend in the market is likely to continue in the short to medium term 
The rupee too rose to a four-month high, boosted by record high stock markets, which is seen as giving a thumbs up to the BJP's big win. Continued gains in share markets could further lure foreign investors, with overseas net inflows into stocks already past $18 billion so far this year. Traders, however, urged caution given the continued prospects of the US Federal Reserve soon tapering its monetary stimulus. The Foreign Investment Promotion Board deferred a decision on Vodafone Group's proposal to take full ownership of its Indian unit in a $1.6 billion deal. Vodafone, which entered India in 2007 directly and indirectly owns a combined 84.5% of Vodafone India, which is the country's number two telecom company by users. 24 Indians were among those arrested rioting in Singapore's worst outbreak of violence in over 40 years. At least 18 people, including 10 policemen, were injured when some around 400 people attacked the police and damaged 16 vehicles in an Indian district there. The trouble started after a private bus fatally knocked down an Indian pedestrian on Sunday. Thai Prime Minister Shinawatra has dissolved parliament and had called for election after sustained protest in capital Bangkok. The move followed the resignation of all opposition MPs from Parliament on Sunday and came as protesters marched again on Government House. The street protests against Srinivatra's government are still continuing. US Defence Secretary Chuck Hagel during a short visit to Islamabad held talks with Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and Army Chief General Raheel Sharif. The talks were on how to defuse tensions over the controversial US drone strikes and over Islamabad's role in Afghanistan. Ties between Washington and Islamabad have been seriously strained over the drone strikes in Pakistan's tribal belt as well as Afghan Taliban sanctuaries inside Pakistan's borders.